Hey, Lucas, how's it going? Hey, I'm I'm good. Good man. Um, yeah, I just I wanted to hop on here because um, I I got this idea for a comic book. Um, okay. So yeah, I just wanted to run it by you. Uh, you know, we read a lot of stuff. Um, you know, I thought that this might be a, a cool pitch. Um, but let me know what you think. So, uh, basically, there's this uh little kid, um, in New York City. Um, okay. And uh, he's on a, a field trip um, and he gets bitten by this, this spider um, and okay. it gives him superpowers. Like the spider is like radioactive. Um, wait, wait, so... wait, wait. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's rewind real quick. It's yeah, radioactive. Sure. So wouldn't the spider die? If it was... Also, why is it? It's why like a special it... kind of spider. Also, why is it irradiated at a school field trip? Like what? What teachers bringing their kids to like a radioactive environment? I mean, you know, he's doing experiments and uh, also, how is he not dead? If if the it, let's say the radioactive spider somehow survived and bit him, wouldn't that immediately either give him cancer or immediately give him radiation poisoning? Wouldn't that be like a Chernobyl situation where he would just start melting basically in front of uh, all his classmates? I mean, uh, I mean, like, uh, so like it, uh, but, but what if, uh, he had a blue and red suit and he swung around the New York city like a spider? What if he had the, so what is he sponsored by cops now, bro? I'm just going to, I'm going to be straight with you, honest with you. This is the worst idea you've had straight up. Like, like go back to the drawing board, erase it, maybe burn the drawing board, buy a new drawing board. And then put some put some more effort into it. All right, yeah, you're you're right, you're right. Okay. Hey guys, welcome back to the Cosmic Panel. Uh, this is the weekly polls where we're going to be discussing our comics that we have chosen for this week. Uh, but before we get into any of that, I wanted to give a quick shout out to our sponsor at this point, longtime sponsor, Comic Universe, uh, sp- at four four six McDade Boulevard in Folsom, PA. Uh, this is an awesome comic shop run by Mike and Mike, two really, really awesome guys. Uh, if you haven't been to the shop, it has an amazing collection of trades, hardcovers, has an amazing back issue collection, uh, gets comics every Wednesday. They got keys, graded books. Uh, they got Pokemon cards now, uh, and they got some really sick dollar bins. So definitely go and check them out. And uh, if you do go over there, say uh, Lucas and Elias sent you. Thanks so much for sponsoring us, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below what you guys are excited to pull this week. And without further ado, let's jump into it. Lucas, what is your first pick going to be? My first pick for this week is going to be Shazam number 13. Um, it's weird to see a Shazam book consistently be this good. But uh, I, I've been very happy. Josie Campbell really knows how to write uh, Billy and has like picked up the pace. Is Considering that she was following up Mark Wade, who is a really, really great author... Uh, I was a little bit worried, but honestly, they've been doing so well. Um, but right now, basically, we've gotten more of an explanation on the whole Captain and Billy thing about how they're separated. And that when they say their names, instead of just Billy turning into Captain, it's actually them swapping places uh, and Billy going into the Rock of Eternity, almost like a Captain Marvel situation, uh, the original Captain Marvel. Um, so it's it's pretty sick, honestly. Um And now Billy is suddenly gone. We don't know where he is. Uh, And we also have Billy's mom trying to claim custody of him and the reveal that his uh, mom now has a new family, has a kid. Uh, And for Billy, it's really fucking with him because uh, I love that they pointed out that it was like, why couldn't she get better for me? Um, it was really heartbreaking, honestly. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It was it was it was a pretty pretty heartbreaking read, especially um, considering how much uh, stuff Billy has gone through solely because of him being uh, in the foster system. But it it was great. It was honestly such a great way to explore more of the fact that Billy's a foster. That's a huge part of his character, and um, even outside of that, the magic stuff and everything has been so fun. Very nice. Sounds like they're advancing uh, this book very well and just moving it at a great pace. Um, I like this cover a lot too. This is a fun cover, and that's yeah. uh, that's funny that they're referencing uh, Marvel's Captain Marvel 
<laughs> by doing that uh yeah. swapping places it's pretty funny the irony is is not lost on me <laughs> but uh that was the letter that that shazam was the captain was burning basically was the letter that his mom sent him saying like hey i want to regain custody of you i have new kid a new kid and a husband would you want to live with me and the captain kept on burning that basically because uh Weird. oh yeah they also explained that billy's emotional stability because Billy is now the Rock of Eternity, because if you didn't know, he like shrunk the Rock of Eternity and put it in his chest. It's really weird. Um, wow. But yeah, it's it's like literally physically in his chest, which is really weird. But now because of that, because he's part of the Rock of Eternity, his emotional state also affects the Rock of Eternity and can start breaking portals through different dimensions, which is basically what the, the climax of the sto- last issue was. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty pretty interesting lore stuff, honestly. Right. But anyway, Elias, what's your first pick? My first pick for this week is going to be Werewolf by Night, Blood Hunt, number one. Uh, this is going to be a one-shot uh, tying into the Blood Hunt event. Uh, that's going to be featuring a werewolf by night. Uh, not the werewolf by night. But uh, Jason Liu is a, a writer who is newer to Marvel, to my knowledge. Uh, and I really enjoyed his Century series. So if um, if his thing is going to be, you know, dealing with obscure Marvel characters and trying something interesting with them, I think this uh, this book has potential. Um, this is a different Werewolf by Night who will be, I guess, debuting in this uh, book, to my knowledge. Actually, Jake Gomez. Apparently, yeah, apparently he's he's been a character for a minute from what I'm seeing. Oh, Jake Gomez here. has existed. Yeah, apparently, uh, I'm seeing right now exactly what how long he's been around. But um, he was in he was in the uh, Marvel's Voices Heritage, apparently. And uh, oh, so that that so this is the uh, the Native American world. I think so. I think this actually is him. Yes. Um, yeah, Unholy okay. Alliance. He was in uh, Crypt of Shadows, 2022. Oh, it is him. And Damage okay. Control, 2022. Yeah, I didn't think that it was actually him. Yeah, he's been able to. Turn I didn't realize his name was Jake from- Gomez. Without uh, the presence of a full moon since the age of 13. That's what uh, the thing says. Yeah. Okay. Word. So good then. We're, we're checking back. And I didn't recognize his appearance either because they made him uh, white furred here, which is strange. But anyway, um, yeah. Um, uh, Taboo and Benjamin Earl Turner uh, created this Native American werewolf by night. Um, so it'll be cool to check in with him, see what he's up to, and see how the blood hunt will affect him. Yeah, no, definitely. And I know that we, we love some Native American representation around here. So this this will be some good one, hopefully. good. Yeah. All right, Lucas, what's first up for you? For, second up. Uh, not, <laughs> <laughs> second up bad. for me is Rogue Sun number 20. Um, now we're getting into the meat and potatoes of the, the next arc. Um, last issue was a cool one, though. It was a little bit of a like almost like a flip book where depending on the way that you read it, uh the story the story would be completely different if you read it backwards or forward um so it was pretty fun um but this issue is going to be dealing with actual like arc stuff now we're dealing with a new ally who we don't really know called divinity we're dealing with some of the monsters that escaped last time um and basically now dylan and his his father are now coexisting basically within the rogue son uh, mantle so Dylan's father is giving him advice. Dylan is ignoring him occasionally and then sometimes paying attention. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's showing promise. I'm 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 pretty excited to see where this is gonna go because right now, um I like that they didn't heal the relationship they had, which is like a very cliche thing to do, like, oh man, you were my father and you abandoned me, but I'm gonna forgive you completely now. It's like, no, we we are work partners now. That is basically the gist of it. And outside of that, I don't want you fucking interacting with me. <laughs> um, so pretty cool. I like it. Um, Rogue Sun has been consistent. Uh, Ryan Parrott is 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 a great uh, author. And uh, I can't wait to see more and more from this universe. Word. Uh, it's cool that they're playing with, uh, you know, uh, interactive story, interactive reading. Um, they did a they Choose Your Own Adventure that. one, too, which was pretty funny a while back. I was going to say in Radiant Black, I know they did those two, the decimal issues that had different possible outcomes. So 
interesting still uh, doing them. thing for them to to keep to keep trying stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I will definitely be talking about the radiant black decimal issues in a minute. So, <laughs> well, uh, what's next up for you, Elias? Next up for me is going to be Poison Ivy number twenty four. Uh, this is, you know, uh, an incredible feat for Poison Ivy to have this long been ongoing. Uh, I'm glad yeah. that there's a fan base behind it. Um, I think this uh, last arc was logical in uh its writing and its pacing and where it's going um but i didn't love the art um but i'm looking forward to issue 24 because uh marcio takara the main artist is back on the book uh and i think they're gonna have to deal with some pretty heavy stuff here um ivy uh tried to sacrifice herself to kill uh woodrow um and uh, Harley tried saving her. Um, she appears to either be dead at the end of the issue or on death's door. Um, but it was a last issue was a fun issue for all the peripheral characters. Um, we got to see, uh, I don't know if they named him yet, but we got to see that blue flower guy, uh, in action as well. So it's, you know, definitely a culminating arc. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if they named him or not. I don't remember. But it was definitely a culmination of a lot of stuff. And uh, they're kind of bringing everything together. Uh, Peter Undine. Undine. Oh, Undine. Um, And yeah, we also got a little Red Hood uh, Hood cameo, which was funny. Um, Yeah. But good for the flamethrower on the bike, I guess. (laughs) But yeah, um, I'm curious to see how, where we go from here. Um. I know we at least have uh, an issue 25 coming. Uh, so I'm curious to see what else uh, we have to do with, with Pamela at this point. Yeah, should be interesting. Um, hopefully the last couple issues for me haven't, haven't been hitting as hard uh, since the year one ended. Um, but I'm hoping that it regains its footing and really, really sticks the landing. I know that the series is probably going to end soon, actually, um, from what I heard. Apparently but, not. <laughs> oh, apparently not. Oh, okay. Reading comments on twenty five, and apparently another twelve issues are confirmed. Hopefully, the arc is is. I mean, you can still do a lot more with Ivy. I just hope that they're not, um, just doing it for the sake of doing it. I hope that G Willow Wilson yeah, is doing like, it because they have a story to tell. Yeah, the the prequel arc was really strong, and I think they you know had to address. Woodrow and and kill him for real now. So this should be the end of him. I hope it's the end of him anyway. Comes and back next arc. I'm just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious to see where they move on from here, right? Because Poison Ivy doesn't have a lot of arch nemeses, and so that can create a you know difficulty if you're just focused on good versus evil or whatever. But um, I think there's obviously a lot more direction and a lot more stuff to do with Ivy here. So I mean, yeah, I, I feel like there's so much they could tap into for the green. Like just talking about the green and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and maybe they're introducing something new with, with Peter Undyne, you know, the blue maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but I'd be curious to get more concepts like that and more time with that kind of stuff for sure. Definitely. All right, Lucas, what's next up for you? Next up for me is Absolute Power number one. Um, I'm really excited for this, actually. I, 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 I've I, completely... I went from mildly excited to very excited. <laughs> um, one, because I saw the art, and the art for Dan Mora looks fucking insane. Looks like the craziest he's ever done because he's drawing so many characters. Um, which usually isn't... I feel like he's limited usually to like a couple characters from world's finest. This is like basically everyone. And it's, it's just crazy to see him basically stretch to his limit. Um, I don't think there's going to be a DC character <laughs> that he hasn't drawn at this point. Once this, this event is over, I'm going to be real. Like animal man is in this, like, like, like even the obscure ones that are like, haven't been caught in spotlight in a minute are getting uh, moments. But uh, Absolute uh, Power Ground Zero was really good, uh, really set up. It had three stories, basically, that set up the characters. 
the first one was basically showing that uh, Superman, uh, John Kent's uh, Superman's son, uh, boyfriend was kidnapped, uh, and that Dreamer is still working for Amanda Waller. Um, the second thing was basically showing that Waller is trying to re- revive Failsafe, um, and is able to manage able to do that through like a time travel guy's means. Uh, and she like traps him. She makes him think that like he he. Uh, how do I best explain this? Time travel is always so fucking hard to explain. Uh, he studies the robot for five days, building his time to build a time machine so that he can get out of Amanda Waller's like imprisonment. But Amanda Waller has like a chrono uh, anchor at the facility. So that will always bring him to the first day that he was there. So she, she talks to the younger version of himself, lets him do whatever the fuck. And then goes and talks to the five day version of him and is like okay not that you've had five days to study this now i want you to tell me what's wrong with it <laughs> um so it was pretty fucked it was really cool though um and then the final story which i think was the most interesting uh was written by joshua williamson and it featured fallout from house brainiac and basically it showed the brainiac uh prototype being sent down to earth that uh doesn't really have uh is like the ultimate version of Brainiac, quote unquote. It's a female version of Brainiac um, that Brainiac built, and Amanda Waller plugs plugs it in uh, with Failsafe's help and plugs her own mind in and spends twenty years in a simulation, but twenty years in this this uh, basically teaching this version of Brainiac to hate superheroes uh, <laughs> and to want to kill them. And I love that Failsafe brings up it's like you you we did 20 years in 20 hours. Um, and it was like, Amanda, are you sure that like the stress on your brain is okay? Cause that's a lot. And Amanda's like, I don't care. It's well worth the risk. It's just like, man, she does not give a fuck about herself. She just, she just fucking hates them. <laughs> she hates she's them so bad. So just, she's just evil. She's just, like, yeah. <laughs> just that's it. She's but just yeah, terrible. no, she, she spent 20 years inside a simulation just and like died. That's the end of the simulation is her dying. <laughs> so it's like, what the fuck? But, but it's basically her training. And uh, the daughter during those 20 years was one learning how to speak English, learning everything, but also learning how to stop and take away the powers of all the heroes, which is the setup for the actual event. So it was really sick. I'm really excited to see what's going to happen because uh, I like that this is combining so many of the stuff. This feels like a very natural event. That's that's the great thing about it. Um, unlike some other events in the past it, where it feels ham-fisted or just random or out of nowhere, this feels like, no, we've been building up to this slowly but surely since like 2021, I feel like. And now this is the culmination of that event, basically. Yeah, man. Uh, I really hope it's strong. I'm looking forward to checking it out. It's got a lot of potential. Yeah, definitely. What's next up for you, Elias? Next up for me is going to be Doctor Strange number 17. Another amazing cover here from the Blood Hunt tie-ins. This is going to be uh, dealing with more Victor Strange, more Wong. Um, Last issue was, was pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, Wong trying to guard the sanctum by himself, uh, only for Victor to inhabit uh, Stephen's body. Um, so he's on the loose now. Wong uh, didn't have the the gall to to kill Strange. Uh, you know that would have been fucked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it was a cool fight nonetheless, and uh, lots of cool dialogue. And uh, yeah, now at the end of the, that issue, we had bats, the snakes, and Baron Mordo all uh, cooped up, ready to to make their their plan of attack. So, yeah, it's a solid solid arc for for the Doctor Strange book so far. I've been enjoying it. I'm hoping we see um, so a little more of a uh, what Clea and Strange are up, Strange's uh, astral form are up to right now as well. Yeah, I love the explanation of that. He can't use Strange's magic either. Um, it it's it's a good crutch so that he isn't an overpowered vampire sorcerer supreme. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. So, know. He uh, just doesn't know how to use magic. He doesn't know. Yeah, a lot of things. He hasn't had a corporeal form in a long time too. So he's 
you know, he's not uh, at the top of his game. Yeah. I also do love uh, when they called back to when it was like when our situations were reversed from where Wong was, where Strange was, Stephen was in Wong's body and he <laughs> and Victor was in his own vampire. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's funny. Jed with the fucking deep callbacks of shit that I would have never known about. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, excited I don't know to pick what the up fuck they're Maybe Bats possesses his body. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Tries to shunch him out. Yeah, that, that could be like a way, maybe. Yeah. All right, Lucas, what is next up for you? Next up for me is Radiant Black 29 and 29.1. Uh, this series, this event has been fucking insane. And the last issues had a huge cliffhanger for both versions one a little just a tiny tiny bit worse than uh the other um and by tiny bit i mean a a lot more uh like an entire city getting fucking nuked uh, in comparison to one person dying (laughs) in the one timeline uh but yeah uh marshall uh in his timeline the entire city gets fucking nuked the entire city of san francisco (laughs) woohoo And he's just left in the rubble. And that includes all the military people, his family, uh, who else? Uh, so many people. And now in this other timeline uh, with with Nathan, only his father died, but they were able to contain the, bl- the bomb and blast. Um, this series has been crazy. We we have uh, quite, quite a bit more before this event ends, from what I understand. Uh, so far, we know that it's going to go up to 30. Um, and every time they do these issues, they take a, a month in between because it takes two months to make the two issues. Um, so it's going to take a bit. But uh, so far, from what I can tell, or actually, no, they seem like they're speeding up, actually. Wait, August? Oh, maybe maybe they're speeding up, actually. Um, yeah, because the next one is actually next month. Oh, shit. Okay. So it's been it's been a minute a minute since the last one, um, but it seems like they're going to be going consistently really every February? month. What because issue twenty eight point five came out in February? So. Yeah, it's 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 been a minute. Jeez. Yeah, so so it's it's been a while since we got in an issue. So, but now we understand why because they wanted to really get this last leg of the event over and done, basically. Um, so July. Uh, and then uh, July, June, and then August are going to be straight through. So should be pretty exciting. I'm actually really excited to see what's going to happen because <laughs> I, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to be real. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Cool. <laughs> what's next up for you? Next up for me is going to be Spider-Man Reign 2, number one. This is the unexpected uh, return to the Spider-Man Reign universe. Uh, oh definitely God, not I something I expected. Huh? I just noticed Oh, yeah, beard. that's his beard. Yeah. <laughs> that is his beard. I did you read? That. Did you get to read the first Reign series? No, I, know, I'm, I, I only know like the broad strokes of it. Okay. Well, I'm going to get into the new yeah, a bit, it. if that's okay. No, um, 100%. But yeah, I was not expecting to see this in previews when I opened that, you know, July's previews. Really strange thing. I don't know if it's something people were asking for or what. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, for me, the the it's only four issues, so it's not long. But it's a very gradual arc, and it only gets better. Um, For me, it starts kind of like whatever, and then it really just ramps up really fast, um, which is cool. Uh, But yeah, it's very political, Um, does that really well. I think the writing and dialogue is really good. Um, There's a lot of, you know, actually very compelling aspects. You know, it's definitely like a terrible, you know, universe, but I think it's uh, it's done effectively. It's not like... um, obnoxious in the in the way that it's terrible you know obviously everyone's complaint is is peter's radioactive sperm uh which is awful but also uh heartbreaking when you actually read the the full story and you get everything um 
just in context with the moment that he like breaks down and explains that it's actually, I thought genuinely compelling. Um, but everything is pretty extreme and very fucked up in this universe. And that's kind of the idea. Um, but yeah, uh, they have shown that he's a really quite powerful version of Peter in this. Um, cause he didn't die at the end of the, at the end of the series. Um, he basically survived an explosion, uh, and I guess now he's back to interact with more characters. Um, them including Miles in this feels a little cash grabby, but uh, I think for me the weakest part of the first uh, mini was the art, and it looks like Care has already come so far because uh, he is going to be writing and drawing this once again. Uh, and maybe it's the inks a little bit, but no, definitely he has come a long way as an artist, it looks like to me, based on these covers, based on some of the art I've seen. So yeah, uh, I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to pick this up. Uh, if they can maintain this, uh, this harsh landscape and introduce some new characters, I think they, they can definitely pull it off. So I'm pretty excited, honestly. Yeah. Um, someone pointed out that miles looks yoked in the variant cover. <laughs> he's really fucking buff. Yeah. He's huge. But he's, he's also huge. old. He is I wonder also how old, much but... of a time jump this is going to be, you know? Yeah, how old is is Peter in the main in the first one? Do we he know? was already he was already pretty dang old. Like like Jonah, Jonah was even older and Jonah was still alive in the first in the first run. So I don't know how I don't they never put an age on it, but he looks probably, I don't know, late 70s if I had to guess. Um but it was interesting and they they can definitely go into this, but once he put on the costume, uh, he was like good as new kind of thing. Like he mm -hmm. had his same gusto, same energy, same everything. So I'm curious to see if they're going to explain that as just a psychological thing. Cause this version of Peter is also very psychologically unwell. Um, he thinks that he's with MJ in his apartment for most of the run. Uh, and only at the end, like third, fourth issue, does he break down and, and admit to himself that he's seeing things basically. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's brutal, but it's, uh, I think it's, it's well done. Uh, like I said, I think the art could be, can be stronger and I think it, it will be, it looks like. Um, but yeah, there's lots of other characters we didn't touch on. Uh, there were new characters like Salmon had a daughter, uh, which was a really, uh, heartbreaking, but really cool, um, plot point. And, uh, yeah, so, I don't know how old he's going to be, but I think if they can explain how he's able to operate so well as Spider-Man, uh, it'll make a lot more sense. Two things. One, how can he breathe with a fucking beard while wearing the mask? And two, how the fuck does that not get caught on webs? <laughs> yeah, it looks like, at least in this first cover, that he has the mask up only to this point, I guess. And then it's just Yeah, the or he cut it. a hole or something. Yeah, but it is massive. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, we're gonna it's deal with Miles. Annoying. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, we're gonna deal with Miles. We're gonna deal with Black Cat. It looks like. Um, but yeah, they uh, they got a lot of potential here, and uh, I I really I didn't think I was gonna like it. I didn't really enjoy the first issue, but like I said, the first run really ramps up fast, and I think it it gets it gets good and it tackles some cool some cool points. So yeah, curious to see what this series will hold. All right, Lucas, that brings us to your top pick for this week. And what would that be? My top pick is public domain number six. Um, a lot of indie series returning this year. Um, and I am loving it, especially especially right now. Um, public domain, if you didn't know, was written and drawn by Chip Zdarsky, um, who has been wrapping up some other indie series that he did. Um, but I've been loving this. This is This is one of his best series i would say um it's a love letter to like artists like jack kirby and uh other uh, creatives like him who never really got the attention that uh they deserved for creating series that would later be adapted into films and tv show um if you didn't know the original five issues basically dealt with the idea that uh it was revealed that the main character uh actually owned the rights to uh, the the basically equivalent of like Marvel comics. Um, they didn't realize, and then they were fighting for it. 
Um, and then they decided we don't care about the movie rights or anything. We just want the comic book rights. And so the ending of the first arc, I would say, ends with the two brothers and the father deciding to start their own comic uh, line with the character that they made and to uh, continue making stories. Um, it's pretty sick, honestly. I, I've been loving it. I love that it's like a generational story. Um, and it really goes to show just like the the love letter to creatives that take the time to really pour their heart out. And even without the recognition that they deserve, that they deserve it. Yeah, very nice. Um, I definitely will have to check this out at some point. Uh, I know it's another strong chip book. Um, but yeah, probably I'm, his best. I'm happy to opinion. hear those uh, those themes is tackling. It's pretty cool. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, I think I think it's the most solid because it's less jokey, but it's not just like without mm. its humor. It's it's very much uh, mm. we're focused on the. He's very focused on the message of it, which feels it has a very strong vision, which is which for me really is felt throughout the entire book. Um, the art looks fantastic. The writing looks fantastic. Everything's translated very well. There's not like action or anything, obviously. So it's just a, a lot of dialogue, but it feels natural. Cool. Very nice. And uh, yeah. <laughs> it looks like Chip did this cover, which is cool. Yeah, no, he's done all the covers so far. So no, oh, he's wait. he's. Okay. Yeah, no, he's in charge of everything for this series, basically. Uh, he he only has the, the backup artist that kind of helps with the shading and, and coloring, and then the editor, and that's it. This is basically his love. But love he doesn't child. do interiors, does he? No, he does interiors. Oh, okay. He's he's writing and drawing this. Yeah, but I didn't know. I what Public domain was how I found out that he could draw. I didn't know that he drew, period. But anyway, Elias, what's your top pick? My top pick for this week is going to be Holy Roller number seven. Uh, this has been a blast of a series. I've talked about it on the channel before, um, but yet another original indie book that I've really been enjoying. Um, it's, uh, funnily enough, a bit of a comfort book for me. It's just uh, it's some great action, really fun idea for a superhero being bowling themed. He's got trick bowling balls. He's got, you know, all sorts of tech and devices in that theme and that's really fun uh and yeah he's just beaten up fascist so i mean <laughs> what else can you ask for um i think this is ending at issue nine it's not on this cover but last issue they put six of nine yeah uh on the cover um i don't know if yeah there it is okay yeah, it's a serious finale they just forgot it for seven for some reason um but yeah this has been a lot of fun uh his uh, his high school crush slash the daughter of the main head honcho uh, betrayed him. And uh, last issue, he was kind of on the run. Um, and then he got saved by uh, the initial person that he concussed and beat the hell out of. Uh, so uh, all he can say is pudding. <laughs> um, so you try. it's pretty funny to try and uh, glean the... The meaning of what he's saying uh yeah but the he wants in. to help out <laughs> he wants to help out and uh this next issue is gonna uh deal with this app that is basically infected uh and is driving everyone crazy with sonics uh and making them just kind of destroy each other and uh yeah I'm, I'm excited to to pick up this next issue uh we got hologram hitler um, he was uh, encouraging the the right wing ring, wingers to take their supplements, um, which is just a drug concoction of like meth and shit. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's great satire, but also just a really fun action and superhero book. Yeah. Honestly, I got nothing else to say. You basically covered it all. <laughs> it's Word. it's pretty great. Yeah, very fun book. All right, well, that's going to do it for the weekly polls for July 3rd. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Like, subscribe, comment below all that stuff we said at the beginning. And don't forget to support your local comic shop, read some comics, and we'll catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.